Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the OSHA Virtual Quiz Competition State Level Between Schools sponsored by CIDB. I am Miza and I will be your host for today's and for your information to do due to pandemic, today's competition will be held via online. And before we start, let me introduce our jury for today's. We have YBRR Haji Muhammad Nazir bin Haji Bahari, a chairman of CIDB and for our co-hosts today, we have Adila from SNK Dato Harun, Iqmal from SNK Dato On, and Afika from SNK Sri Aman. Let's give a big a round of applause for our contestants. Round one. It's like everyone is so excited for the first round, so let us begin. Okay, the, the Occupational Safety and Health Act is an act which provides the legislative framework to secure the safety, health and welfare among all Malaysian workforce and to protect others against risk to safety or health in connection with the activities of the at work. And the question is, who are the parties important to OSHA Act 514 and what are their duties? I know the answer. The answer are uh, the parties that are important to the OSHA Act 514 are the employer, the employee and the safety officer. The employee plays an important role in keeping their workers safe during work. The employer duties are shall develop a safety and health manual that has provision for safeguarding the safety and the health of the public and his employees according to section 15.2a and shall ensure that all workers are properly informed and of the hazards of their respective occupation and the precaution necessary and adequately supervised to avoid accidents, injuries and risks to health which stated in section 15.2c. The employee is res responsible to take reasonable care at work for the safety of themselves and other persons. Other than that, employees should comply with any instruction or measure on occupational safety and health as required under the Act or regulations. Also, they must cooperate with the employer and other person in this in the in discharge of any duty under the Act or regulations. And lastly, the safety and health officer shall advise the employer on the measure to be taken in the interest of self and safety and health at the place of work and shall process such qualification or have received training prescribed by the minister from time to time under NIOSH. That is correct. Congratulations, Iqmal, for the right answer. So let's get through to the next round. Are you guys ready? Yes. yes. All right. Round two. Protective Increment PPE is one of the important things in construction. So the question is, what is the definitions of PPE and explain in details the types of PPE available in the industry in our country. Me, I did have one person. Yeah, I want to answer. So, before I explain types of PPE, let me give the definition of PPE first. Okay, personal protective equipment or commonly known as PPE is an equipment that protects users and minimizes exposure of the hazard in the workplace from injuries or illness. Okay, some of the example equipment is safety footwear, googles, life jacket, and hard hats. Move on to the types available, there are eight categories of equipment such as respiratory protection, eye protection, hearing protection, hand protection, Food protection, health protection, working from height equipment, and skin protection. Mm, so for the further explanation, I will only explain three categories, which are head protection, food protection, and respiratory protection. Head protection is an equipment that is designed to protect head area against any hazards such as object falling from above. Example of head protection are industrial safety helmets, industrial bum heads, and caps. Compared to food protection, it is used to avoid and protect the user's food from any injury during movement in the workplace in which users need to wear shoes or safety boots. Safety boots. The last one is respiratory protection, which is designed to protect the individual from any various hazardous substance in the workplace where we need this equipment especially 
in the work place vapor dust welding and powder yes the answer is correct good job adila from smk dato harun all right let's move on to the next questions round three so constructions industry development board or known as the idd was established under the construction industry development board act 1994 act 520 to regulate develop and facilitate the construction industry towards achieving global competitiveness and according to the statement above how many roles and responsibilities are stated in this idb website and least five of them me yeah, i want to answer okay there are a total of four, 14 roles and responsibilities state in cidb and the first one to advise and make recommendation to the federal government and the state government on matters affecting or connected with the construction industry. The second one to obtain, publish, initiate and maintain information relating to the construction industry, including the establishment of a construction industry information system. The third one to impose any condition of registration and accreditation of the contractors and to revoke, suspend or reinstate the registration and accreditation. Part, to regulate the implementation of industrialized building system in the construction industry and the last one to attend to any complaint or report made in relation to any failure of, of construction works or complete construction work which affect public safety and take appropriate action to address it. The answer is spot on. Congratulations, Afisa. Big round of applause. Thank you. And impatiently, here is our last round for this quiz. And it might be quite difficult. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Alright. Round 4 The question is, what are the responsibilities of a safety and health officer? You have 5 seconds to answer. Yes, Afrika. Uh, ensure excellent communication between all parties involved in the construction. For instance, between client and subcontractor, subcontractors. Whoops, that is incorrect. How about the others? Mm -hmm. Time is up. Since everyone did not know the answers, we will hand it over to the jury. So, jury, what will be the answer? Thank you, MC. As we know, a health and safety official SSO is a qualified official responsible for the monitoring and controlling of health and safety compliance and related rules and regulation in his or her organizations. The responsibilities as a safety health and officials are first, submit annual report to DOSH about safety practice in the company. Second, notify to DOSH if any accidents happens. Supervise the PPE users, the employee, prevention of possible accidents and the last but not least dealing with the employer on adherence to OSHA 1994, FAP 1967 and ACTA pre Okay, thank you Jury for the answers. Well, since everyone has the same point, we will move to the bonus round and this round the question will be given by the Jury himself. Please. Thank you again. Final round. As we know, in becoming a site safety supervisor, we have to get a green book for safety and health officer (SHO). The question is, can you define the difference between the green book and yellow book? Mm. I want to answer. Yes, please. So, the first difference is just like we know, the green book is special for safety and health officer (SHO). SHO, where the yellow book is for site supervisor or can be known as SSS. Next, the green book is used in manufacturing, construction, oil and gas, service, and utilities, where it covers the general area in general safety. OSH, compared to yellow book, it is valid only for the construction site, either it is for buildings or infrastructure. That's all for me. The answer is correct. Congratulations, Adila. So, I would like to announce the winner of 2021 OSHA virtual quiz is... And the winner is... 
Adila from SFK Dato Harun. Woo! Congratulations Woo! once again, Adila from SMK from Harun for being the winner for 2021 OSHA's virtual quiz. And congratulations, everyone, and thank you for participating in our virtual quiz. And to those who lose, remember that this is only the beginning and do not give up. And don't worry, at the very least, you have done your best to place in the top three. And a big applause again to the jury, YBIR, Haji Muhammad Nazimu bin Haji Baharudin. And for all consistents who participate today. And remember to stay safe and stay excellent care of yourself and your family, especially during this epidemic. Thank you everyone once again and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.